David, eu queria voltar um pouquinho na questão das relações ecológicas das doenças infecciosas e também da evolução delas. E de quanta sorte a gente teve ou não com a pandemia atual, que apesar de tudo, a taxa de mortalidade que ela provoca perto de pandemias do passado é relativamente baixa. Tem essa certa lenda urbana, talvez, de que vírus burros matam gente demais e acabam parando de se propagar, e vírus mais espertos matam menos e continuam se propagando com mais frequência e que numa numa cidade como a nossa, com os níveis de higiene melhores, com alimentação melhor, nenhum vírus seria capaz de matar como a, a peste negra matava. Eu queria saber o que você acha disso. Well, um, yes, this is a this is a subtle virus. I mean, we know that viruses aren't actually smart, but some viruses have evolutionary strategies that are very successful. Uh, now there is an idea um, among um, people that, you know, a virus is a form of parasite. And the first rule of a successful parasite is don't kill your host. That's the idea. In fact, that's not true. The first rule of a successful parasite is don't kill your host until you've had time to jump to another host. So if you have, tra if you have infected person number one, and then you have transmitted to person number two and person number three, it doesn't matter in terms of the virus's evolutionary success whether person number one dies or not. You're still successful because you've transmitted onward, sometimes causing very severe disease can be a strategy that enables better transmission. Um, for instance, um, Ebola. Ebola makes people very, very sick and um, they have diarrhea and they vomit. In some cases, they bleed badly and the virus spreads in bodily fluids. So the more bodily fluids a person loses that someone else is going to be exposed to, either touching the person or cleaning up or whatever, the better the virus can transmit. Ebola does not transmit through the air, as far as we know. It does not transmit on a sneeze or a cough or a song, the way influenza does, the way COVID-19 virus does. So it's not as transmissible as that, but it's much more lethal. Um, this virus, as you said, kills only a small percentage of the people infected. Um, and that, in a way, has led us to take it less seriously than we should. It has led some political leaders in particular to take it less seriously than they should. Donald Trump, for instance, last spring saying, oh, it's just an influenza. It's just like a cold, it'll go away, not taking it seriously. So now, nine, 10 months later, we have um, millions of cases in the US. I can't remember exactly how many, 12 million, 15 million cases and uh, we have more than a quarter million deaths that's a lot of deaths although the percentage is very low it's because this is a successful strategy for the virus transmit widely don't make too many people sick too quickly transmit before you cause symptoms and spread around the world and when it's doing that a virus doesn't have to worry about whether it's killing people or not Uh, and but the result is that it can end up killing a lot of people because it's so successful, even though the case fatality rate is quite low.